In this video, I'll show you how to identify a high moment of inertia ratio two different ways. First, by adjusting the values in the inertia identification screen within SigmaWin Plus, and then by calculations taken from data trace measurements also within SigmaWin Plus. Hi, I'm Matt Pelletier. In this setup, a direct drive motor is connected to a rotary table with several load weights. I am connected to the Sigma 7 SIEC amplifier over USB with Sigma Win Plus. This amplifier has a built-in IEC program commanding motion, which I am able to control through this on-screen HMI, but program jog could also be used. This rotary table represents a process that requires rapid and accurate positioning with a tolerance of one thousandth of a degree. That turns out to be 47 encoder pulses, which I have set here in PN522. I also have set the tuningless load level to maximum and the response level to 1 here in PN170. But you can see in the trace there is still significant instability in the torque, feedback speed, and position error. The motor takes hundreds of milliseconds to settle, and this position coincidence signal does not stay low. Therefore, it makes sense to leave tuning less mode and attempt auto-tuning or custom tuning. The first step will be to find the inertia ratio. So I'll be sure the motion is stopped and close out here the trace and parameters. I'll go into the menu here and select tuning and execute to confirm the change to tuning less. Turn that off. Okay. And now we need to turn the power off and on. I'll just do that through software reset. Execute that. Wait about a minute. Now back into tuning and execute this inertia ratio identification here. I'll come back here in a minute and look at what we're going to do with these two edit buttons. But normally you would simply uh, verify this reference selection uses a reasonable speed, acceleration, and distance, and then go ahead and click through this here. Servo on, forward, and reverse. And it says that it's failed. So when you know you have a large inertia ratio and it just fails like this, what you can do here is go back in and try again. I'll do a software reset here to come back in and try this again. So the first strategy here is to execute moment of inertia ratio, edit the speed loop gain and inertia at start level. And the way that you do it would be to reduce the speed loop gain by one half from 400, half of that is 200. And identification start level, we'll double that one. We'll double to 600. And now click through this again, like we did before. Forward, reverse. And we have this error again. Okay. So you may have to go through this several times, taking half and double of those parameters every time. Cancel again, software reset again. Now for another attempt at the inertia ratio, this time I'll go half of what I had before, 200 I had before, so I'll edit this down to only 100 for speed loop gain, and I had tried 600 for identification start, I'll double that to 1200, and attempt again, start, next, servo on, forward, reverse, Ah, see, it's starting to find something here. I'll do forward again. Reverse. I'm hearing some squeaks. Forward. Reverse. Just keep doing it until it settles in on some value here. And it's settled here at somewhere near 97.76%. Okay, write the result into PN103 and finish. Of course, software reset anytime the servo has been turned on. 
And now you'd be ready to go into uh, auto tuning or custom tuning as you normally would. However, it is possible that you get all the way down to the minimum of this parameter or the maximum of this identification start level and it still has failed. So if no combination works, then the inertia is outside the range of this tool, even with those adjustments. But you can still estimate the inertia by measuring the acceleration rate and acceleration torque in the data trace. And this spreadsheet helps by making the calculations and unit conversions for you here. You would select the motor model number and then measure and, and fill in the values for each of these other fields in yellow. And the value of PN103 will be displayed down here. First, let me get back to a realistic starting point and return the parameters to a previous state like I had before here with the tuningless mode on level one, load level two. It's important to command a profile that results in a constant motor speed here, since that will correspond to the friction torque level. We need to know the friction torque and the maximum torque in order to find acceleration torque. So I'm going to use the HMI here just to make a longer move distance. And now when I start a trace of this, I can see that there's a constant speed and that torque level will be the friction torque level. I might as well measure that friction torque right away. I think I'll just zoom in here and put down a cursor right about there in the middle. Cursor D is 17.208% torque. I'll enter that in this spreadsheet here, 17.2. I'll also select the motor. In this case, I'm using the SGM7D02K. Now, the rest of these fields may turn red, uh, just indicating that the data in here doesn't make sense at this time. But I have more measurements to do, so let's continue. I also need to have an area during the acceleration where the torque is constant. So sometimes in the application, it's pretty much constant already. But if it's not, I can make it constant by adding a torque limit. Uh, you don't want to have a torque limit that's too low, maybe just kind of toward the top. I think maybe 120%. So back over at the edit parameters section, I know that that's a torque parameter, PN402 forward torque limit. I said 120%, write that in. Now take another trace and start the move. And I can see the torque has been limited here to 120. So this is the area in which I will measure the acceleration. Before I do that, I can put in here that that peak torque was 120%. So that means the torque to accelerate is the difference between the two, or 102.8% torque is being used to accelerate at this rate. Now, I think for clarity, I'm going to turn off the channels that I'm not using by unchecking them here. Okay. Okay, so I'm looking at just torque and feedback speed. And I'll zoom in on just the acceleration. So this section here, I have a constant torque. Let's see what the acceleration is. Put cursor A at the beginning of that point in time and cursor B here toward the end. And now I'll see with cursors C, I'll have that intersect here where cursor A intersects the feedback speed. And I'll put cursor D where the other cursor intersects. Now, since I'm measuring the feedback speed, I want to be sure to look at channel 4 feedback speed. The change in speed is 3.2, and the change in time is 81 milliseconds. So over here, change in time, 81 milliseconds. Change in speed, 3.2. The spreadsheet has calculated the acceleration rate. But more importantly, it's calculated the inertia ratio parameter. Here it's coming in a little bit lower than the Sigma Win Plus tool, which had about 97, it's saying it's 84, still within the same general range. Remember, these are always just estimates. So let's try it out. I'll go back here to edit parameters, turn off that torque limit back to the default. I'll go to PN103, 8431, like we found in the spreadsheet. 
Of course, I'll also need to turn off the tuningless mode. So I'll set that to zero, disable. Let's write all these in the amplifier. And software reset. There we go. That software reset is complete. Now I'm back to a 60 degree move. And I've started the trace here. Let's run it. Now the correct inertia ratio is in place, so I can just follow standard tuning procedures to find the best gains. And actually, I have done that previously, and I've found that under custom tuning, advanced adjustment, custom tuning, with a rigid model mechanism, and this inertia by graphical analysis, that a feed forward of about 100 and a feedback level of 20, hit start tuning here, and hit completed. So let's tuning it down a little bit from default. That seems to be pretty good. Additionally, there's a parameter PN13D current gain level. This can help to reduce noise in lower bandwidth systems. I'll put this down to the minimum of 100. Write that in. And now I'll start another trace and see how this looks. Nice and quiet. And it's very much a textbook speed torque profile here. Pretty constant acceleration torque, friction torque, deceleration torque. The settling time is only 15 milliseconds. I'll even zoom in here to prove that. The move stops here when the green command hits zero. And the motor's in position when the red coincidence signal drops to zero. I'm measuring actually a little bit less than 15, 12 milliseconds. This is the benefit of a direct drive motor. And of course, remember that this encoder measurement is very accurate because it's directly coupled to the load straight through the rotor without any backlash and negligible compliance. Now, just for fun, I'll ramp the speed up to fastest it can do. Let's take another trace and run that. Still nice, quiet performance, 45 milliseconds settling time. You can zoom in and verify that also. Thank you for watching this video. Please note that the product manual contains a detailed section on tuning in Chapter 8. Additionally, Yaskawa offers free, hands-on, self-guided video training covering the basics of Sigma Win Plus and servo tuning at www.yaskawa.com slash self-guided. We also offer a live tuning lab where you can come in and tune a mechanism like this for yourself with the guidance of the instructor. For more information, please go to yaskawa.com.